What's crack and like everybody? This is Megas Magneto from Now or Never Crew. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, but it takes a little bit of effort to make because I gotta get videos from everybody to react to, um, review, etc., whatever you wanna call it. I am outside on my balcony, so if the traffic's way too loud and you guys hate it and it's too much sound, um, background stuff, pollution, that's the word, um, then let me know when I won't do it out here again. But I, uh, yeah, it's sunny and as you can see, I got nice shadows all around me. It just felt like a good vibe. So I'm gonna be watching you guys' videos and then comparing it to mine to give you guys examples of where you're kind of um, missing the mark on the flare. So first one we're gonna get into, let's go. So I'm gonna watch it like once proper speed and then I'm gonna break it down. So let's go frame by frame now. So if you notice, when he flares, as soon as his second hand comes down right here, everything drops just like that okay so that's usually a big indicator that number one you're not able to hold your weight properly in the front and number two that second hand that comes down isn't strong enough to hold your weight number three you want to make sure you're circling around your body enough to the front so that your balance is easier to hold because when you just throw yourself into it like this you're gonna drop really quickly and then you're gonna find yourself dropping to the ground right away like he is. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys an example of the drill that you wanna do. So let's go back four years to um, my first flare tutorial. And I'm gonna show you guys the drill you wanna do, which is this drill, okay? So this is the drill that I teach always at the beginning and this is what helped me to learn how to get my hips far out in front of me. Because if you have this drill really saw, that means you have enough arm strength to hold yourself up on each side, okay? So this part of the drill right here, that move, that pull in pike, that's what I'd really recommend you training on that side to strengthen up that arm. Next video! So if you notice, <laughs> he can rep flares, okay? So one of my teachers, he always taught me, get 10 of a move first and then start to clean it up which has relevancies for sure. Cause I also had another teacher who is the one who taught me my flares initially. And he said only focus on one. So there's many different people with many different theories on which you should focus on. My, in my opinion, you should try both. So if you notice, he goes one. And then after the first one, the next like five are like the exact same, just a little bit worse every time. Which means there's not really a point in you training past like two at a time for now because it's just gonna be literally draining your energy. So first, the beginning, we're looking good, we're looking good, we're looking good, everything's fine. If you notice right here as he puts his second hand down, he starts to lose momentum as he's coming around right here. And then as soon as you're going for the second one, it's just kinda, it's just gonna be weaker and weaker and weaker. So that means right here as he's coming around, you need to work on getting this stronger all right here so you want to get that pike on that right arm for him stronger because if you pike right there more it's going to have more power more time and more cleanliness to get around into your second flare you want to have your hips higher you want to have that leg as close to your ear as possible so that you can lean as far over onto that for again his instance his right arm as possible so you can get around so for me what i would recommend is training that second hand catch which is here, and making sure that your pike right here is as strong as possible. So stop right about here, see how much higher I am. My foot's easily off the ground, my other foot's higher up, and I'm high off the ground. So if you compare them side by side now, not to call out people, just trying to give you an example so you understand. So if you notice, the main difference is my bum is further up and out than his is. His body's very compact close to his arm. And when you do it like that, it means it's really hard for you to get around for your second flare. So you wanna make sure you actually extend that further out so that you can easily get around for the second one and you're not getting caught there. So again, we have an instance, as I said before, if you're not really able to go hit like two properly, then there's no point going for like four, right? Because then you're just gonna be wasting your energy. So if you notice right away, his leg is bent as he's going into it. You want that first leg as you're sweeping under the second leg to be as straight and as long and circular as possible. So you really wanna make sure that first leg, the thigh crosses 
all the way to the other knee. So you wanna make sure that you're able to straighten those legs in the front. If you don't have a solid split, then its flares are gonna be very difficult because when your legs are here, it's hard to get that full momentum and power where you want it out here, right? So as you can see, his first flare is solid. So um, if you guys want a tutorial on how to get the second flare, then let me know, comment down below and I can make a tutorial for that for sure. Um, so the biggest issue right here is he's focused so hard on getting like your first flare so perfect, which is great. But the issue with that is sometimes when you're so focused on just one, you kind of lose that 10 flare mentality, which means your second flare, you don't know how to re-kick. So you do one and you're like, oh, I got it, yeah! And then you completely lose all your power for your second. So again, if we watch, he's trying to use the momentum from his first one to ride through multiple, which isn't gonna work. You have to always re-kick right here. So right here, you gotta, again, kick equally as hard to your head and through as you did the first time. If you compare it to his first one, check it out. So his first one, look at his legs. See how straight they're getting right there? Now check it out. Second one, see how they are? There's no power in it. It's weak, it's just flopping down, which means that you're not kicking it nearly as hard. The beauty of flares is even if you mess up one, you can always pull it back or two just from re-kicking. But if you watch, he's gonna start doing a drill, which is for how you get two flares, which is doing coffee grinder into flare. Um, but the issue is, number one, his footwork sweep is not strong enough, bro. You gotta have a strong coffee grinder and a strong footwork sweep. As soon as you do the coffee grinder, you need to go up into that pipe position. So again, that's a drill I can kind of go over for you guys. If you want in a two flare tutorial, let me know, comment down below. Go on to the next one. Oh my goodness, we have a sideways video, everybody. Um, so I'm gonna attempt to watch this sideways. <laughs> okay, so the biggest issue Again, you'll start seeing patterns here as I go through them, and everything's gonna start kind of making more sense, hopefully. Um, and that's, again, her initial kicking leg. If you watch, the ankle, right where the foot is, is clipping the other one. Rather than going to your thigh or your knee, she's actually kicking right towards her foot. So you wanna make sure that, again, your leg is crossing all the way past that other foot. So if, it, if your leg doesn't kick all the way Pass, like again, I'll show you on my video, like this, if it's not kicking all the way across, then your initial kick is gonna be too weak to power you for the rest of it. So you wanna really make sure that initial kick, you'll hear me saying this over again, like a broken record, is super strong and as wide as you can. Don't clip and go straight to the front, because when you go straight to the front, that happens. You're, gonna, you're not gonna have enough momentum and time to get your second leg up, and it's gonna drop to the ground. Try and straighten those legs as soon as you kick them. You gotta, again, kick your ears. Like, you really gotta straighten those legs. If you're not gonna straighten them, then you're just gonna crash like this, right? And then another one, if you notice, her arm is crooked here, bent. If that arm isn't solid and controlling your weight, you're gonna crash down like that and land on your hip and your bum every time because you're holding your whole body weight, right? So if you can't have that arm straight, I'll give you an example. So if you watch when my second hand comes down, see, it's, it's, it's there, dude. Like, you're not gonna move that arm unless you're gonna hit it. Like, see how much force is going into it? Boom, right there. If that arm can't hold your weight there all the way around like that, then you're not gonna find yourself able to really hit it nicely because your arm's either one, not strong enough, or you're just not comfortable putting it down fast enough. So really make sure you're keeping that arm straight so it's not crooked like that. Moving on! So if you notice, his, his, his leg is crossing. So that's good, he's got like a, a good circular flare. So if you notice, he's getting lower and lower and lower because number one, he's not using his hips, right? So when you don't push your hips out far enough, you're gonna find yourself getting lower and lower and lower. So if you notice also his flares are super quick, like he's, he knows how to put power into it. It's not, power's not an issue for this guy. What the issue is, is he's not using enough technique for his flares, he's just throwing it. So it's just multiple different ways, right? You can just throw your flares, you can use the technique, whatever, but if one way, if it's not working for you, then it's clearly not working for you. And then again, like if you look right here, see how close together his hands are? Like that's again a sure sign of when you're throwing it really fast, it's really hard to control where your hand placement is and everything. If you notice with my flares, I'm not going super, super fast, but 
my hand placement, again, look how wide that is, you see? Look at that, and now compare that right there. You know what I mean? Like, if that ever happens, that's telling you that your hand should be way more spread apart. And rather than trying to kick so much to your ears, think about kicking forwards to the corner, front corners of the room. If you can't get your hips to here in front of you, then you're gonna really struggle with getting your flares nicely off the ground because you're just gonna be going in and then you're gonna be dropping again. My goodness, that flexibility, dog. Don't kick the cat. Don't kick the cat! So this is a fun case. So this is when you have flexibility versus power. So if you notice, this guy, flexibility-wise, is ridiculous. He's got like full splits or over splits. Um, so because of that, he can get the front of the flare like easily. Like look at that. But he has zero hips in it. So when you ha when you use zero hips and you don't use your butt, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna find you have your flares are really close, your bum's very close to your hands, and your flares are super tucked into your stomach. And when that happens, it means it's really, really hard to do the back of it because you're so low. So see, he can barely get his second because he get he's just off the ground. So when that happens again, you need to go back to the flare drill that I taught in that tutorial, and you need to drill the front of it until you can bring your hips up. And every time you're kicking, rather than think about opening up first, think about going in front of you first and then raising up. You've got to go forwards and then up, not just in right away. Because if you just go in right away, that's what I did when I first started, you're going to find your flares are just riding that flexibility and momentum, and they're not using any technique at all. My American homie, let's go. So if you notice, he's got the nice V. It's just as soon as he gets to the arm, everything comes crashing down. And the reason for that is because, again, there's no pipe there. You need to have that side pipe on that second arm. So if you're not able to do this drill right here, where I go up into a high pike like this, if you can't do that pull through drill, you're gonna really struggle on that side of your flare because you have to, as soon as that hand, second hand comes down, you gotta lean again all the way over to that arm and pike your legs. So my boy Scooter, if you can get your pike right here, bro, if you can pike your legs up right here and lean onto that arm and get your hips raised, you're gonna get around. It's literally just that one part. So what I'd recommend is go back and drill just those side plank pull pike pull-ins that I've done um, many times and pull yourself all, all the way over, open your legs, keep your hips high. So right here, when you're going up, push your hips up so that you can get to that side pike. Because again, doing a little comparison for you guys to see. Um, when I come right here, like see how high I already am here? Like you can barely see my head. And then right here, boom, right? That pike is what's so necessary to get around for your first flare. Next video! Number one, if you notice his hands, too far out. You never want your hands really past your shoulders. Because if you're too far out, you're gonna find you it's really hard to hold yourself because you're trying to see how he's almost sliding low. Like he's starting out close, but then his hands are slipping. So that also might just be down to a slippery floor. If that's the case, wet your hands a little bit first and you're gonna find that it's gonna be sticky and then you're gonna be able to do it better. But if you notice, he's kicking at the back and then he's sliding at the front, which is kind of messing him up because it's making that kind of like jitter motion happen. See what I mean? Boom, 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 like that. So how to combat in that is you actually want to slide your foot from the very beginning for the drill all the way around the ground and then push your hips up at the top. So if you notice, he's starting high, right? And then he's starting right here again when he's kicking is high. But then as soon as he gets to the front and he puts his foot down again, he's dropping because he starts so high, so his body's got to go down or it's got to be supplemented by holding and putting extra power in. I'm not starting higher than I'm ending, if that makes sense. You should never start higher than where you end. You should always be starting lower and then going up because you want to build the momentum up. You don't want to have the momentum up already and then it's just going to crash down. When you drill the front a lot, you get a really good front. But the issue is you got to also drill the side, the back, and the side. And if you notice, his foot clips the ground as he's coming in here. Because, again, hips are too low. So you have to make sure your hips are high enough so that when you're coming around, your foot doesn't smack the ground like that. 
and so that when you come back around, you, your hips are high enough so that you can kick off the ground and you're not on the ground like he is right here. Or also you're just gonna keep going on the ground and you're relying on that ground to keep you up. And then you can kind of have force flares like this. And if that's your goal, great, you're there. But if you want them to get cleaner, you want to start bringing your hips higher and doing those side and back drills that I do in the flare tutorial so that you can get a stronger flare on um, all your sides, not just your front. Because a lot of time when we're doing flares, we think just front. But you got to think of the front, the side, the back, and the side. If you just think about the front, you're not going to get there. Ooh, someone actually sent me slow-mo. Thank you. If you guys send me slow-mo, it's a lot easier for me to watch it. We have a case of... Actually, we have a couple things here. Go on. So number one, hips. Again, he's focused on just the pike and his hips aren't going out. Which is okay at the beginning, but it means you're not really going to get past much of something like this. Um, and the biggest thing too is, it's hard to tell because it's blurry, but I believe his head's looking over his shoulder rather than front. So you really want to make sure your whole body's facing the direction that you're flaring in. Because if you start your flare and you're looking somewhere else, or your body's twisted at a weird angle, you're not going to get around ever because like if you watch when he's coming down here like he's twi his head's twisted that way his legs are trying to go that way and his hands facing forward so like it's just a bit of a, it's a bit of a gong show so try to make sure when you're doing my flare drill that you everything you have is straight on your thumbs should be forwards right your thumbs should be facing forwards your head should be facing forwards your hips should both be forwards both your legs should be forwards if one's twisted at a weird angle you're going to have a nightmare of trying to correct that, right? Again, what I would recommend is go back to my drill and really make sure that you can kind of slide it and keep everything straight first. If you can keep everything straight, then you're going to find that you're not having that issue anymore. I hate flares, man. I've been there many times. But don't worry, once you get them, they're the best. He's clipping right in the beginning, his foot, like we talked about. So he really wants to put more hips into that first initial kit or else you're gonna find that you're just gonna go up and then you're gonna drop. <laughs> so, and you're just not gonna get the full potential of your sweep. Um, and again, we have a bit of a twist going on here. So if you, if you ever stop the video in the front, everything should be facing forwards, right? Like this, watch. Go back to my video. When I'm in the front, you see, my legs going around, but you see, you should be to see your head through your crotch, right? Your hands are down, your hips are up, your head's through your crotch. You should always be seeing that. Or else, if you don't pause, if you pause the video and it's like this, then that's a sure sign that you're twisting away from where you want to flare, which is bad. That means you're you're trying to rotate your body before your body's ready to rotate. So if you notice his second hand is being placed in front of his first hand, make sure you always place your hands in the same line. If you don't place them in the same line, you're gonna get weird twists like this happening. Okay, making sure that your hips, again, don't focus so much on your up. Your up is good now, you have that. Just just fix your hand placement so that they're in the same line and push your hips forwards. Don't go straight to your V, because when you go straight to your V in the front, this happens, and then you're not gonna have any power to go back around for the second one. Okay, let's watch this, frame for frame. So his initial kick is pretty good. But again, if you notice, what he's doing is Rather than allowing your foot to touch and sweep off the ground in the beginning, which is what you want to do when you're initially learning your flares, he's going from the ground and then off the ground, off the ground, and then his foot's gliding here again, which is anticlimactic because basically what, again, you're doing is you're kicking your leg and then as soon as you hit the front, you're losing all the momentum because it's bouncing off the ground. So you really want to make sure you're sliding on the ground the whole beginning and then pump it off right here so you don't have that weird hill to jump over right before you get into your flare um number two hands need to go wider because if your hands are in closer than your shoulders then you're gonna find your flare is too constricted and you're gonna lose your power and your momentum and your mobility to go around so if you look at my hands again they're at my shoulders if not a little bit outside my shoulders flush again so the pike is there, it's close to there, but again, because that hand is too close, you're cutting off your momentum for your side. So make sure, and your power. You really wanna make sure that your hands are further apart. That one's a bit better. Um, 
then so that you can get the power to go around. Now, when you get into the front, if you notice here again, he's going up, which is good. And then right here, rather than going forwards and then around, so you have that space to get your hips up in the back so your feet can get through, he's going up and then in. You don't want to go up and then in because if you do that, then you're relying on strength versus the momentum and the technique of the flare. Or oh, we got sideways. So funnily enough, remember we just talked about going out and then dropping in right away. His legs, he's also starting really high. So if you watch my flares, I always start my leg very close to my second leg. Because if you're kicking super high up, you're gonna have a high start, but then you're gonna have a low finish, which is what we see right here. If we watch like my initial sweep in, I'm, st I'm very low. Like that leg is just off the ground, right? If not sliding on the ground. If your initial leg is very low, then you'll get out around. But if you watch again, his initial leg is super high. So when you start that high, again, you get a lot of up and then you get a little, 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 little down. And then again, number two, he's coming too close to his arms. So make sure again, you push your hips further out so that you have space to get around. Go in socks, at least on that one foot and slide and ramp up. Cause when again, you're starting off the ground, his legs not super high, but when you're starting off the ground, that high, you're just gonna be throwing into your flare and then you're gonna be dropping right here. So ramp into it again, I will say it over and over again, slide and then raise. Don't start high and then drop because that's, you're just always gonna drop right here then when you come around because you're just riding that first initial kick and you're not using the technique of your hips to get yourself around. So try and get your splits wider, number one. And, and, and then really just keeping that foot on the ground to ramp yourself up. Oh, we got grass. All right, let's see what you've got, my friend. So doing grass is hard because it's uneven, as you just saw with that, but he corrected on the second one, so that was dope. So this is a really good example of why hand placement is so crucial. Because if you watch the first one, see how he kind of falls out of it awkwardly? That's because his hand, watch, he placed behind himself which means he didn't, couldn't go all the way around. So he went whoop, and dropped down. But if you watch the second one, see, his hands were perfect there and he got around perfectly. If you wanna go for your second one, cause your, your, front, your, your front V is nice. Now all you gotta do is bring your hips further out in front of you. Because again, if you, if you compare, it's not a huge difference, but those couple inches are a huge difference when you're trying to get around. Cause then when you're here, you wanna be off like that. You don't wanna be down like this, right? So if you don't have your hips up in the front, it's gonna be really hard to rotate them around into the side. Literally, just keep those hips up and keep going around. Um, I'd have to see you actually go for two to see, but your number one, your one is good, bro. If you're solid, you're ready to go for two. That's what I go for now. Last video of the night, everybody. Ooh, sound. So this is again a case of why it's kinda of sketchy to do it not on floor because he can't slide his foot in the beginning. So if you notice, again, his hand, leg is gonna be higher right here than it is down there, which is the worst thing as we've talked about many times tonight, because then your momentum's gonna go from up to down and he's gonna crash right here. So you really wanna make sure you're sliding and you're do, using it as a ramp to get up, not uh, up to a down. Because if you just go up to down, things that go up must come down, everybody. <laughs> So I would suggest either wearing a sock on that um, floor you're on. Oh, there's a helicopter. Hello, helicopter, how are you, sir? So again, I'd use that foot as a ramp to get yourself up first. And then again, if you notice, his hips are also rotating out. Reason being, he's keeping his hand down too long. You gotta keep that, as soon as your second hand comes down, your first hand's gonna come off. So the first hand, which is this arm, down, 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 and then up. But as you see, his second hand is kind of coming down too late, so he's falling already. So you have to bring that first, hand, that second hand down as fast as you can, so you can take that first arm off the ground. And up, 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 hand down as I hit the front, and then as soon as I hit the front, and it's turning, my hips are going around, my hand's coming off, right? So you see his front, he's already going past center, which means that he's over-rotating 
rather than putting his hand down. So make sure you don't kick to here. You don't ever want to kick to the diagonal over your arm. You always want to make sure your center. So that's why kicking forwards with your hips in front of you is so important. And that was the last video. One of the guys that sent in a video was kind enough to let me share this with you guys because this blooper is hardcore. And I was like, yo, can I share it? He was like, yeah, go for it. So this is why we should all have respect for everyone that trains flares and why I have respect for all you guys because this move is hard, it sucks to train, and it's a long road, and sometimes the worst will, will happen, which is this. Okay, ready? Oh, no! Okay. He's okay. On that note, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and educational for you. I wish people made these videos when I was growing up, so I'm trying to combat in that and make that for you guys now. So if you like this video, please like the video, comment, subscribe, and smash the bell button for more videos. And as I said earlier, if you guys wanna see me do a how to get your second flare video, comment down below, let me know I can make that happen. And also if you'd like a common mistakes video, excuse me, or tips video, comment that as well down below. But I think this covered most of it. Also, one more thing to comment down below if you'd like, what move should I react to next? What power move, trick, etc. do you want me to next? Don't forget to let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Before you go, if you're not completely sick of my face already, don't forget to get my free course, Breaking Made Simple. To access the course, all you have to do is go to the link down below. To get the free download, all you have to do is join the Facebook group, Breaking Made Simple, which is a hub for people to learn, grow, and just get better and become the best b-boys they possibly can, man.